Anybody, is this your first day in prison? Second day, maybe? Like, you don't know what's going on, right? I believe in the ability of a person to change. You have to want to be a better sister, wife, mom. You have to admit this place is, is different. Historically, prisons simply lock people down, keeping inmates quiet. You need to calm down. For women, it simply doesn't work. We're going to be transitioning several hundred inmates into completely different and innovative prisons. The idea was to try and provide a place where an inmate can come and try and learn something, learn a skill. I've never been so happy to be in prison. Every one of these women are going to get out. Roll out, ladies. Let's roll out. Did we do the best job we possibly could to make them better citizens? Please don't come back. Bye. It'll be a whole new world for us and the inmates. Hating this little lame-ass place. It's a matter of time before they start fighting. <laughs> you. Are you rich? We could blow up. Give us as much freedom we bound to get in trouble. Dude, for real, this is a setup. Substance abuse is a big issue. That me up. All of us are drug addicts. Some girls come, they're just gay for the stay. Some girls <laughs> come gay from the street to here. She said the more they tap it, the <laughs> Go. I've got into about 14 fights in the last year and a half. You're just talking to make me go there and whoop that bitch's ass too. There are those already that we know that are trying to test us. Someday maybe you'll be ready, huh? Yeah, maybe. This place is boring as black. Look at Katrina. She's It's the same mission power, respect, money. You know how we do. It's our way or no way. This is a very risky undertaking, but we have no choice at this moment to do the right thing. Across the nation, there are several states experiencing a population crisis with females coming to prison. Careful and careful. What we're seeing in America, there are more women coming to prison for longer prison sentences. They're going to unrestrain you, and then you go and sit at the bleachers, OK? We've absolutely, in New Mexico, and also experienced a significant and dramatic increase in our female population. That we cannot approach in the same way that we have traditionally. 112. I don't get my stuff, like, that's our approaches to correctional programming for many, many years have been simply lock people down, keeping inmates quiet. You need to calm down. And then releasing people straight into our neighborhoods. What we found for women is that it simply doesn't work. Now, historically, all of our female inmates assigned to the prison system are held within a, a private prison institution, locked up in that manner. I'm going to spend 23 years here. <laughs> In this cell. Yeah, it sucks. If we are to succeed, we've got to do our best to design the prison experience to be as closely related to what the world's going to look like when they're released. First 12. Stay in order. Yeah. Keep them like that. Springer was built and designed not so much as a prison, but a secured learning environment. Well, we have this campus that has provided us the most remarkable opportunity that it offers women the sorts of jobs and a level of freedom 
for this to work. We're gonna have to provide them the leadership that many of these women never had in their life. Good afternoon. My name is John Sanchez. I'm the warden here at the Springer Correctional Center. Welcome to Springer. This place is different, very different. Our goal in the Department of Corrections is to try and make the streets of New Mexico safer. This facility offers a level of privilege that you have not experienced. I've been very blessed in my career. Honestly, in 22 years, I've dealt with a lot. When I was doing my internship, and I, I was dealing with a 15-year-old juvenile, and I told him that his record was going to be sealed and that he could go on and do whatever he wanted with his life. And he was very respectful. And he said to me, uh, sir, sir, that's the world you live in. That's not my world. He said, my grandpa's in prison. My father's in prison. I have an older brother in prison. And I'm going to go to prison. And there's nothing you can do about it. I remember that very distinctly. It's sad. How do we break that cycle? What, what do we do, not just as the Department of Corrections, but what do we do about as a society. In dealing with everything that I've dealt with, it's brought me to a point where I'm prepared for this, that I have matured. <laughs> what we're trying to do here is create an environment where you're able to get some programming or try and do something different. Your job until I give you programming is to stay out of trouble. Every one of these women are gonna get out and did we do the best job we possibly could to make them better citizens? What I'm asking for is your cooperation. All right? Thank you and welcome to Springer. It is a different approach. Most of the staff, they're gonna have to adjust. They're not used to having 48 women around them. Some of them are kind of freaking out about it. Any prison setting can be a dangerous place. What's going to happen here, ladies, is you're going to walk over here yes. where they're going to get strip searched. Yes. If you would like to act on their emotions, that could result in more assault. With females and their different personalities, it's a matter of time before they start fighting. It could blow up. All right, ladies, listen up. You're going to receive a beanie, a jacket, and a uniform. Anytime you're in those oranges, your shirts will be tucked in. With freedom comes responsibility. Make no doubt about it, there are rules that are in place and will remain unwavering. There is zero tolerance for drugs. There will be zero tolerance for inappropriate sexual relationships, violence, or any other criminal conduct. Anytime you guys don't want to follow the rules, we will start writing you up. So make sure you follow the rules, OK? So right now, They'll get your uniforms, and then they'll have you come over here and fill out your forms. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and stand right there. Give them your name and your size. Medium top, medium bottom? Yeah. All the way against the wall. We've made it very clear what success looks like. You have the rules. You make the choices. You too? For those inmates who don't want to accept this investment that we want to make into them, I've got prison beds for you. I'm going my Western handles our most difficult, higher risk inmates with longer sentences that are already hardened in their spirits and hearts and made some poor decisions. They place too much risk on injuring or killing our staff and or other inmates. Because of security reasons, they are going to be held in a far more restrictive environment. Hey, this is <laughs> Are you ready? I don't like it. it sucks. It's up because we're stuck in this room so little. Look at it. It's like real small. Like there ain't there when we can't even see outside the window. You made the choices to come here. This is your neighborhood. I am going to have safe prisons. I can't feel like this, dog. At the end of the day, this system has been about creating opportunities for people to make choices. Uh, here. Springer represents a completely different and innovative approach to prison management. That's why we refer to it as our sort of experiment in New Mexico. As we transfer these women, we're going to be watching very closely to separate out those who are committed with this investment and those who are going to look to exploit these new freedoms. This is a state facility now. Things are a little different over here. Thank okay. God. 
This is so big compared to elsewhere. I know, we're living in the ghetto. <laughs> The Hilton compared to Motel 6, you know? <laughs> For real. Oh, potatoes. Look, sausage and gravy biscuits. What? I'm so excited. <laughs> Fat girl at heart. <laughs> Crisp sheets. Oh, yeah, it's gonna sleep so great tonight. This is a nice mattress. We were sleeping on metal before. It's pretty different than where you were coming from. You always have anxiety. But other than that, yeah, it's way more comfortable. I'll tell you that much. We can come and go as we please here. Before, you know, we have the doors and everything, you know, a lot of lockdowns and things like that. So it's really nice to be able to walk around freely. Don't come to everybody. prison. <laughs> Many, if not most, of these females are first time offenders. They're far more uh, positioned to succeed. I have a two year old that's waiting for me, and I, I can't wait to get back home to her. But at the same time, there will be some females who come to us with pervasive criminal histories. So scared when I get there. It will be difficult to change. Hating this little lame ass place. Too much freedom. I'm red flag like a here for no reason. I'm What's even insulted by that. She's just trouble all the way around. She knows it. She received misconduct reports that followed her here. She's a challenge. She's gonna learn rather quickly. She's not gonna get away with very much. They don't got no proof or nothing of you. They sure don't. Apparently, I'm related to El Chapo Guzman. Donde esta mi primo? Que venga me saque. Donde estas, Chapo? I'm an outgoing and short-tempered female. A lot of these females are intimidated by me because they know that I will fight to get what the hell I want or my way. I want some cornrows going to the side. Hook me up with some kind of starburst. I consider myself a boss up in here. I've heard it's a lot better here but I really don't believe that they care on how we do our time or what's gonna happen to us when we get out. They split us up and now they expect something from us. We were all real frustrated at the same time because of our new surroundings and used to being institutionalized. We're inside a facility. We hardly ever got to come out. Yeah. What they're not understanding is that we came from somewhere that had no structure, yeah. no consistency. We ran that Exactly. We literally ran that place. You know that movie Rat Race, how they just throw you out there and they can see you? You know what I mean? I feel like they're like zoomed into us in yes. this little camp. We're supposed to be successful here. Oh, shoot. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. Look real? at these braids. They look hot. God, I'm sexy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know Godfather? Yeah. <laughs> Godmother over here. They done up putting us all in here together. They don't know about us. <laughs> Just days into this transfer, over the next three to four weeks, we'll be transferring hundreds of female inmates to Springer. Let's go, ladies, let's go. The process of settling those inmates is extraordinary. From their access to commissary, to phone privileges, to security screenings, to assuring that all of those inmates' property is transferred, there's still so much that needs to be done. It's going to be challenging. Our staff are gonna have to be on their game. They're gonna have to stay alert for any inmate 
who might try to take advantage of these newfound freedoms. What time are you in? In six. You like it? Yes, I love it here. This is great, huh? Yeah. I've never been so happy to be in prison. No, it's a nice sunshiny day here in Springer, New Mexico. I've been talking with the medical staff about how this, just out walking around and getting sun, how good it is for them. You can play the right? Own desires to, to be better just by out walking around. The first day I was here, the warden came up. He goes, trouble. It's written all over you because I'm watching you. And I was like, ah, I didn't even do nothing. The other prison I came from was a piece of The guards disrespected. They treated you like You didn't have no programs, no opportunities to better yourself while you're on the inside. I wish I was here before, like, where I could do something with my time instead of nothing, you know what I mean? There's a lot of programs, schooling available, trades, all that here. Coming here, I did have a little bit of anxiety. How are you doing? Good. Are How's you OK? Yeah. I've been in that one room for so long, and it's scary. <laughs> There's a lot of people here, look. There's girls everywhere. I left two of my best friends behind. Like, one of my best friends, she's a lifer, and she's probably going to be going to Western. So that's going to be tough. I'm still adjusting to it. Who's in the pod, like, of our people? <laughs> one of the reasons I'm scared is because people click up in here. A lot of people click up. Either it's gangs, the connects, the users. It's just everybody clicks up. What's prep room? I keep it cool with everybody because I'm trying to stay out of trouble. You know there ain't no such thing as no clicks around here, right? Yes. OK, we don't do all that, right? This, this is cupcake camp. A lot of girls here don't want you guys to know about how people click up in a place like this. People that bring the drugs in the facility, a lot of people try to click up with them because they're waiting for a free high or a handout. It's going to be one of the biggest clicks here. Female inmates don't typically have gangs, but they have what is called prison families, which creates these cliques. The family structure in prison is like, you got to have somebody to make sure that, hey, everything's all right. You have that protection. Women in prison have a closer relationship with each other than they do with their own families. Sometimes blood is not thicker than water. Water can be thicker than blood. And that's how it is for us. There's a hierarchy, you know, in any kind of prison you're in. You know, and you don't want to be at the bottom. She's like, oh, hey, bitch, you're not about friends. You're not about friends. The influences of these prison families are never, ever healthy. And as we make this transition, those prison families are being broken. And that presents itself with the opportunities for leaders to reestablish new families at the new facilities. It gives you a lot of power to be in control of a lot of things. Those cliques can create conflict in the prison system. Are you serious? Yes. The little troublemaker. She's the one who started it, but... You guys are meatballs. When I have my spot in line, I want my spot in line. You know what I mean? You I'm... tell Kathy to talk, I... get hit. What sucks is that? My baby. I love you, Martha Cano. In prison, everybody knows me. I'm Mama D to a lot of people. Oh, she better hope I don't run into her. I don't like it when people hurt. It bothers me a lot. Get a forearm to the freaking nose. I'm head butter. <laughs> I'll take your teeth out. I'll head butter till she can't see no more. Her and her wild ass hair. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been here in Springer. I don't want to be weak in here. I'm not going to change because I'm in prison. <laughs> Today, we received 49 of the female offenders. And along with the intake process, we will be going through the property. The STIU is a security threat intelligence unit. We monitor gangs and drugs. 
We are charged with the safety and security of the facility. Women offenders, almost all of them, have drug or alcohol related offenses. I just want to buy some crack in Albuquerque and then go back to Cruces. I know somebody that could get some good crack. It is very dangerous to move masses of inmates. There could be a lot of drugs trying to come into the mail trying to come in through laundry. Do an inventory of everything we receive for each inmate. Unroll every sock, open up every photo album, screen through every book, and make sure there's nothing they're not supposed to have. Sometimes there's drugs in the cards. We go through every sheet of paper, inside envelopes, make sure there's no strips that might contain drugs. When they're on drugs or alcohol, women have the potential to be violent. This one right here feels very weird. Very suspicious. Rosenbacher. The way it's wrapped in the corner here. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that either. We don't know what it is. Is something you want to test or definitely could be heroin. Right here. What's your step? We'll have to make a line, probably back here. Are you on your second case? I had two cases, yes. I'll let you know what's going on with that. All right, thank you. One of the main objectives is to make sure that we're doing everything we can to prepare them for reentry into our communities. All right, what's your name? Robin Wilson. Those inmates with longer sentences will be very excited with the open campus environment and with the opportunities that are at their feet that they're ready to take on. We're gonna keep you busy while you're here. I want a job. The, I want to do the horse program. So. Oh, I did you put in for that? I did. They okay. said it had to be level one. We'll get you a level one. We'll see. We'll see how it works out. Those inmates who are very, very close to the door are actually, as you might expect, very fearful about what's on the other side of this prison wall. Since so you're on um, short timer status, where are you going to go? I have a couple of family members that would like me to go to their houses. So we'll be dealing with a whole lot of different motivations and emotions as we make it possible for them to return back to a productive life. I've been down six months, and I still have four years to go. This is my first time in prison, dude. Like, I can't believe it. I never in a million years imagined I'd ever come to prison. I was just a stay-at-home mom. I never even went out. I never did nothing. These are my kids. This is my son, Andres. He's 17 years old. And this is Antonio. How cute, huh? Mm -hmm. Their mother that took care of them is gone. This um, experience has affected all of us. Um, most part, my parents, because they're elderly. It's my husband, Styles. We met August 6th. We were married by September 5th. The following wow. next month. Didn't even know each other. We were just like, this is going to work. My parents blame him. They were upset because they felt like Maybe he made a decision on his own that brought me here to prison. What happened? We were there hanging out at the house, and all of a sudden, um, I got a phone call. It was a girl, and she was like, you need to come quick. Your son, they're chasing him with the truck. They're running after him. They're literally going to run him over. And Styles was actually asleep. And I was like, wake up. We got to go. Something's wrong. Show up. There's a bunch of gang members, actually. And there was a little argument. When the guy pulled up a brick, <sighs> I think my husband just reacted and, and he shot at them. One person, he shot him through the back shoulder and he exited out of his chest. Was he okay? Did he live? Yeah, he did live, but he could have died. Um, the other one, I think it just like- Grazed like, him? Gra yeah, gazed him. And 
But my intention was just to talk. I didn't know I was gonna go from zero to 100 real quick. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they charged you with the same thing as him, even though him you got, weren't the shooter? Yep, me and him got the same charges, dude. I was wow. surprised. I was like, what? He was just protecting us. It just, everything went wrong. I lost everything. I regret coming out of the house that day. If I could change anything, we would have handled this different. This should have been handled different. It's really, really uh -huh. sad. This is a picture we decided to take two days before I came to prison. I haven't made correspondence with my family since I came here, and I'm praying that they come visit me soon. Wow. Mm -hmm. My kids, my life. I'm dying inside till I see you again. Angelina McManoey. My out day is going to be soon. It's going to be soon. Real soon? Okay. I need you to sign both these forms. The date right here. In about two, three days, we'll have your new projected out date. That way you can get out and get home, get on with your life. Yes, sir. All right? OK. Thank you. No. I'm about to leave. I'm super excited. <laughs> I ain't been out four years. He said he didn't have my out day in two to three days. That's what's up. But like here, there's so much freedom. So I just want to go do things, you know? Things that I know I can't. Trouble's my middle name. <laughs> <laughs> when I first got to prison, I fought so much. I feel like they brought me here just like they could keep a closer eye on me. Like they singled me out a lot because of the write-ups I came with. Mm. It makes me want to act out even more. And it's just like Not there's me. just that door that I could just open and go, you know? Yeah. Temptation is all around. We've got those inmates that are younger and wild. They enjoy the drama and the attention that comes with it. We're hopeful that by working 101 with each one of our younger inmates, that we'll help bring them along in the transition. Watch your step. Let's go, ladies. Here, buddy. They're waiting for you at the door that's open. I got here three days ago, and I'm still adjusting to it. Are we going to do a commissary order for me? You you need to do it right now, matter of fact, because this is, they're going to pick them up tomorrow morning. I have a girlfriend in prison. Me and my prison wife, Rebecca, we've been together on and off for three years. Me and Rebecca, we actually got transported here together to Springer. We actually live on the same bunk. No sweets, you already got that. Okay. I don't know. She knows a lot about me, I know a lot about her. We try to support each other emotionally. I don't know. She's a loyal person. Um, she's a good friend to have. Oh, no, none of those. Please? <laughs> Having Rebecca, it makes things easier because I don't have nobody when I get out. Yeah, I've done f***ed up in my life. I have a f***ed up past. My parents were drug addicts. I lost my dad. I found him dead when I was 13 years old. It f***ed me up bad. And when I lost him, I gave up on life. I started using methamphetamines. I got arrested. I ended up getting pregnant at an early age. I actually gave birth to my five-year-old in prison. I'm a drug addict, I'm an alcoholic. So I get out, I get high, and I come back to prison. I'm scheduled to get out this year, and I don't know what I'm gonna do, and that's what's scary. And it's good to have that somebody to just lean on and cry and have them hold you, especially like when you, you're going through a hard time, like how I'm going through with my family and everything. It's good to have somebody that knows you, knows where you come from, like, to keep you positive. I'm getting ready to leave Springer, back to Albuquerque for court. Two months ago, I got caught bringing heroin into a facility. I'm hoping I don't up being away from her. Females tend to be a bit more emotional. Hey, baby. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
the camera hey. They develop their own relationships within their prison structures. I love you, God bless. Women in prison, we're drug addicts, we're criminals, we're murderers, but we're all hurting and need companionship. This is the gorgeous mm -hmm. one in the pod. There's a lot of romantic stuff going around here with females. Bitch, get over here. I'm not gonna spend years in prison and not have a bitch. That. Some girls come, they're just gay for the stay. Some <laughs> girls come gay from the street to here, you know what I mean? A lot of girls get passed around in here. See a girl one day, she's with one girl, and then like the next day, they switch girlfriends, and like you call them thirsty. They change girls like they change their damn underwear, man. And it's, it's get, it can get pretty crazy. Horse jealousy is gonna be thrown up in the air every day on a daily. They get fatal. Oh my God, they get so fatal. They just can't get enough for you. They don't want you with nobody else. They want to fight you. They see you with somebody else. It's ridiculous. A lot of the chaos and a lot of the, the drama around here is pertained to females being with females. Romantic or sexual relationships in prison environments can be hugely problematic. Not only could it involve coercion, rape, and those sorts of things, there's zero tolerance for it. When you're in prison, even if you hug another female, it's a sexual misconduct. At the end of the day, there's always ways to get around stuff. Come on, where there's a will, there's a way. I'm trying to save my girlfriend's back from court yet. She left to court last week, but I don't see a transport vehicle, so I guess she's not here yet. My girlfriend Lux went to court a week ago, so hopefully I'm still here when she gets here. So. Still waiting, waiting you. It is hot. Can I can film it now? I'm gonna read my cards. So they said I'll be leaving any day now? Yeah, right. Yeah. I still have a minute. Imagine I might leave before Lux. She would be all hurt. In a perfect world, she would come back. We'd both be here and we'd get married probably next weekend. What is this gonna tell me? Oh. It's both of our first time getting married in prison, you know? So um, we think we're gonna do it outside. Are you coming to the wedding? Yeah, of course. You already know. Yeah, I'm missing looks like crazy. It's a lot of cards. This is a lot to tell. A lot to tell. Actually, I met her like three years ago and we absolutely did not like each other like we were like enemies so then when she came back this time i was like "Ooh, like i'm, I'm gonna hit her up you know she's all can i sit down she's all were your girlfriend get mad i was like i don't have a girlfriend <laughs> you're like oh, you're my girlfriend <laughs> so she sat down and then we've been kicking it ever since there's you there's a lot of love there's your heart there she is there's another bitch Could it be right Another man. So there's another guy and another girl. Like what the f is serious? Booty doop, booty doop. Your stomach sticks out more know. than your booty doop. We are having committee to be assigned a job today. The most key innovative measures that we see at Springer is that it offers women the sorts of jobs as felons they're most likely to get when they get out. Are you four? <laughs> Come here, what do they tell you? We're gonna focus on making sure that we do everything to train them with some transferable job skills. What do you plan to do while you're here? Education and keep myself busy, stay out of trouble. I need gym porters. Okay. What do they put you on? Utility crew. What is that? That's a good job, huh? That's too, like... That's rock breaking? You're stupid. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're outside of the fence? No. Oh, my stupid. God. Right now, I need a housing unit seven pot porter. It'll be Sunday to Thursday from 7.30 to 2.30. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Good, you're up, man. I'm up. Have a seat right there in the middle. 
Hi, guys. Hello, how are you? Good, and you? Good. All right, Gladys Sanchez Padilla. We gathered together to try and get you on the right path with programming, and we'll give you a job today. Where I need you at is a housing unit eight Porter, Sunday, Thursday in the afternoon. And I'll start paying you as of tomorrow. Hey, you like this facility? Huh? You like this facility? Honestly, no, I think I'm institutionalized, you know, so it's a little different for me. Uh, it's better than being locked up, right? Um, I was okay where I was. Okay. What'd they tell you? <laughs> they told me I'm going to hell if I don't change my ways. What? <laughs> <laughs> what did you get committed to? A pot porter. You work Sunday through Thursday, 12.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. That's your whole day! I have to go to work, you know, I just got a job. You know you ain't got to do nothing, you just got to clean and then go outside. You're going to have us over there with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how it is. We have no say-so in here. 30 cents per hour, 30 cents per hour, ladies. What they pay us is just disrespectful. <laughs> Slaves, 30 cents an hour. That'll piss somebody like me off. Is that Big John? Where? Is that Big John over there? Well, Where? yep. No, yep, it is. I need to talk to this m Should we just call Big John to the fence? What's his name for real? What is she John, talking? Mr. Sanchez. Just tell him, Big John, sir, can you bring your moose knuckle over here? Mr. Sanchez! Martinez! Mr. Sanchez! Can we talk? I don't play ball with the game. I don't do business like that. Okay, are you gonna come back so we can talk? Ooh, see, you guys got me off. <laughs> then how do you do business? You don't even talk to us. The warden's a prick. Yeah, the warden. He's a douchebag, really, honestly. You see how much of a dick he is? Like a prick, you know? He's waiting for one of us to do something so he can make sure that we're in trouble and catch a charge and they give us more time. Yeah, I can't do this. I, this, this, all this right here? No. He's somebody that doesn't have respect for us. He's somebody that looks down on us. That's what makes me pop off. We're going to have problems. Thank you, sir. The officer that found it saw the residue in the corner in the bottom of the envelope, thinking that it could be a some kind of drug substance. If they are trying to bring in contraband and bring in drugs, it is very dangerous. Anyone that controls the drugs and has a connection is potentially violent. They end up controlling the facility. It appears to be black, sticky in nature, and it did flatten out in the corner of the envelope. Black spot there. Any small amount is usually testable. It takes a very little amount to, to actually show a positive. Depending on the color that it turns, we'll know what it is. And we'll see what we get. The preliminary test actually shows that it is positive for heroin. This one would be black tar heroin. Heroin has been at an epidemic level in New Mexico prisons for decades now. Something like this can actually add time to your sentence. You can get street charges for dangerous contraband in a facility. When we receive physical evidence that there are drugs being introduced into our prisons, we have to deal with it quickly and decisively. There are those already that we know that are trying to test us. When the females arrive, they will be strip searched. And we're gonna have to also increase the process to go through their property. We are looking for any indications of drug smuggling. Drug dealers, they leverage their capacity to exact fear and intimidation within our prisons based on controlling the drug industry. Situational awareness, okay? 
here at this facility, it's gonna be very active out there on the compound, just going through units. It's still prison. Honestly, they can either be here or they can be at Western. There's not a whole lot of other options. Everybody be careful. So as human beings, we're social animals. If Springer is to be the campus style, pro-social environment it's designed to be, then one of the main objectives is to do everything that we can to get inmates connected strongly to their families. And phone calls is one way of doing that. Ladies, it's now 11.30. We're going to begin the procedure to set your phone up with the voice recognition, okay? It's equally important to make sure that as we're implementing these phones, that we're doing so with every one of our risk management mechanisms in place. It'll say a random number and then it'll ask you to read. Begin reading aloud at the beat. The Tin Man is tall. We can see the dog in the park. So what are your first calls going to be? Oh, mother. My she, mother. She's probably texting oh, right yeah. now. Wondering what the heck is going on. Open the door. Focus see the, the dog run with the ball. The sun is in the sky. We monitor phone calls in prison to stay on top of security threats, weapons, drugs, or any other contraband that could threaten this new environment. There's a number of things that could happen that we don't want to happen. Enrollment complete. Thank you. Goodbye. Who's in line for the phone? Who's There's only line? one line for the phone, I thought. I don't know if there may be two lines. There's not two lines for the phone. There's one line here behind one person. Yeah. I don't know how they have two lines again. This, you know, I don't know. But I know you're after me, so them two are the next two, and that's it. But it don't make. Come here, let's see your eyebrows real quick. Do you want me to help you out? Yeah. Katrina, she's one of the people that I can trust with a lot of things. What was that commotion over there by the phones? Oh, they're trying to make a list, and we already told them that they're not making a list. The young girls that come in, they're young, and they need to learn, and they see us as a mother figure. Who made it? I don't know. Well, we can just jump on it whenever the f we want. Since when do we go by the list? Right? Yep. They don't f up putting us all in here together. They don't know about us. <laughs> we got each other's back no matter what. Who made this list for the phones? Nobody. I don't know. We went off of that. Yeah, we went off of that. You know, these girls were trying to put themselves in line for the phone. Doesn't work that way. You know what I mean? It doesn't work. That. It's not going to go down like that. So are we going to erase this whole board or what? I run this show. That's all me. Where are you guys at with it? Where are you guys at with it? Where are we at with it? I don't know. It's at the beginning. Being a boss, you call it out, and that's what it is. You know what I mean? So it should be first come, first serve, and like you need a phone call. We, you know what I mean? Have respect for the ones that do need a phone call at seven o'clock. You should just be able to get on the phone and not be on that list. The list is gone. You can erase all that. So I guess you guys are, you know, you guys use, just use the phone. Being a boss, just these females don't get to say what goes and what's going to be done. Doesn't work that way. Who gets to say? I, the boss, will tell you how it goes. You know how we do. It's our way or no way. So we've been waiting to get back the phone. Unfortunately, I have not talked to my family. And I is after you. My dad is diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Bye. 
I can't do anything but be a voice to him. Just call Mac after you, okay? program and do what I got to do. Because <laughs> this world here, I don't like it. With phone communication, a number of things can happen. Good things, like staying in touch with family. But also bad things can happen. The coordination of drugs or weapons into the prison system can occur. We've found evidence and are pursuing an investigation regarding heroin trafficking in the facility now. And so monitoring those phones is a fundamental feature. What I'm listening to now is a phone call between the Canaway and her mother. You like it in prison, Katrina. You would have been out a long time ago. And you don't even care about your kids no more because you would have not done what you did in there. You would have walked out that door. She's a person that gets a lot of attention from the other inmates and stuff. You can come in, Etsy. There's no cop in here. She's over there talking in the background to other inmates and just inviting them into the unit, which is a violation. So this is exactly why we have a zero tolerance. Okay, I'm sorry. The COs don't even know what we look like yet. Because I can't tell you how disappointing it is to see someone so close to freedom, so close to a meaningful transition back into our community fail because of it. That one in orange? I don't I'll know fucking you break that bitch in half. <laughs> We're in a formal count, ladies. Formal count. Bring out your ID. 
I shouldn't have to wait for it. Dude, you're standing up in orange like you Come here, baby. <laughs> That's it, ladies. Yeah, she just got back today. So when I went to court, I started growing distant from Rebecca. It was nice. I got a little bit of more freedom to go talk to other girls, do drugs, party. In county, like, I was doing the methadone and the she bought And that me up. Rebecca, like, I care for her, but I'm not in love with her anymore. I don't know, when you're in a relationship with females, it, it gets old after a while. Like, you grow apart. Okay, do you know um, Danielle? God, she's a bad bitch. Badass. Well, that's my girl now. That's <laughs> so when I went to court. I got high. I started talking to this girl. We hooked up. She's never been with a girl, and I was her first girlfriend. Bitch, she's not gay, but I made her gay. <laughs> Wow. Well, within two weeks, bitch. Two weeks. I break Becca's heart a lot. Everybody tells me, stop being so mean to her. And I'm like, Rebecca, get over it. She ain't going nowhere. So what did you do every day while it's gone? Same thing you did. Yeah. Kiss girls? Yeah. Who did you kiss? A couple of, I don't know, some white girls. Are they at least pretty? Oh, yeah, they're bad bitches. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> You're stupid. I'm just tired of being tied down. I want to be able to and get fed up. I'm Crystal Kelly, and I do what I want. <laughs>
Ever since me and Rebecca, we stopped seeing each other. I keep getting in trouble. Hi, baby. I want some of this right here. I love Rebecca. Like, I care for her, but I chose the drug life over her. OK, let's go. <laughs> when you're an addict, you burn a lot of bridges. Oh, yes, baby. I walked out on my kids. I just turned my back on everybody because I chose the drug life, the gang life, over being a mom. My kids, I know, like, I hurt in here for them. Like, I miss them. I can't hold them when they're, they wake up with nightmares. Um, I can't help them when they're sick. What it do, what it do, what you smoking name you? But I can't say I will never drink another beer or do another shot of heroin. Oh, that's heaven. I'm not tired of that life yet. That <laughs> me up. I was like, oh. Wait, I think we should just, I want to, I want to get a snack, you know what I mean? It numbs the pain, it helps me forget. I want some of this right here. It's just, you get high, you forget about <laughs> now, ladies, reception, come on out. All the way to the back wall. <laughs> We have a drug trafficking problem driven by pursuit of power. They are driving their influence in the same way drug dealers do in our neighborhoods. Drugs are not going to be a part of this safe prison equation. Where's <laughs> your chick coming? Huh? When's my chick coming? She's never coming. No, she's not. I'm just playing. My girlfriend Lux went to court about uh, a week ago. I don't know. I'll probably leave before she gets here. Earlier this week, McCannaway was inviting inmates to go into the unit, which is a violation. This is a cat and mouse game, and they're trying to take advantage of the fact that we aren't familiar with them and see what they could get away with. Oh, we're pretty much trying to keep a step ahead of everything. McMadaway, come here. doing anything dumb while you're here? No. I see and I hear everything. You know yeah, that. but I've been good. You've been good at inviting people in the unit. What? Just saying. Just saying. I was yes. talking I can't help if they go in. <laughs> if we have some of the inmates that are making problems purposely, it makes it harder for everybody. Y'all are listening to my phone call? That's what we do. I was just talking though. It's not my fault they went in, you know? They didn't even go in. We have cameras. I'm causing no problems, though. Uh, all right. No, you know what? If I give you a break and you do me dirty like that, I'm actually one person you don't want to mess with. That's why you're on this little teeter-totter with me right now. So as of yesterday, am I going to be watching you? Absolutely, OK? Either you're going to make it up for it. yourself. That's right. on you. All right. OK, okay thank you. I can't tell you how disappointing it is to see someone so close to freedom start to fail. We got to commit to holding them accountable, but at the same time, providing them opportunities to make conscious choices to change. E, they're going to write me up for inviting people into my unit. Because let me tell you, I was on a phone call, and there's all kinds of people that were coming to the door. And I was like, come in. I was like, there's no CO in here. Come in. She just threw that in my face. You just say the stupidest on the phone, though. I hear you. I hear you. I don't talk about nothing you know? serious, though. What a tonta. Looking over here, huh? Mm-hmm. Can I flip her off? You sitting over there talking and looking? Well, they don't let us do our time. They like to f with us. We already got plans. Okay, tell her again. <laughs> f her.
STIU to 101. Can you 87 with me in my office? There was more of this substance. They did confiscate it and they'll bring it up and test it. Yeah, it was all together. STIU, Sergeant Rosenberg. Hey, can you come by the office? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's heroin. Yes, sir. Come check it out. All right, thanks. Heroin, actually. Yes. I thought you guys were talking about how you gave her a urinalysis. She tested positive for it. No, you found heroin. It's not surprising. Yeah. It's disappointing. But it's the nature of the game. It's what they do. They try and get away with stuff. Is it? Her name is right there in the left hand corner. Just make it easy. <laughs> We'll definitely bring her down and we'll question her and call the state police. The Captain Robert Gonzalez at the Springer Correctional Center. I was just calling to see if you have an officer in the vicinity of Springer. Chapo, can you see if you have an inmate, Nicole Springer? And what did you say uh, tested this? I tested it. You did, yeah. Sergeant. For this, you know, even though it's small amount, it's going to be a felony in a way. But if there's if there's more, we're looking at contributing. She's a violent one, huh? Aggravated assault upon peace officer, child abuse. steel storm to be ridden out. So it's a constant cat and mouse game. Come on. Go with that way. But our staff knew that going into it, and they're fully poised to step up and make sure that we're doing what it takes to mitigate that. Once this transition's over, we'll be at full capacity. Go about 10 ahead of me. 424. That's the number that we've worked to uh, increase to. Now that we're into this, we're going to start to walk around and say, what do you need? What did we What did we not account for? I don't want to be the good horse, but once everybody gets their commissary, they'll calm way down. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> way down. <laughs> way down. You'd be surprised what that cup of coffee do for some people. Yeah, not only. You so know? I think and we're addicts by nature. Please. I'll check on it, but I'm not guaranteed. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're hanging. Thank you. I'm hanging by my fingernails. I know. McManaway, you keep touching your pants like you know I'm going to ask you to pick them up. Like you know I'm going to ask you, right? Maybe I'm getting kind of tired of asking you, huh? Yeah. McManaway, she had a, a sense of attitude from the moment she got off the bus. Warner was dogging me, intimidating me. So you kind of key on those things. Hey, he beat shot me like a mother. You walked off, he turned his neck and everything. Because he's singling you out, bro. Canteen issues? They want their canteen, their coffee, their food, their hygiene. How much of the, is these are these canteen issues them just trying to get their way. Dude, he has it out for me. He oh, has what? it out for me. I cannot wait for you to leave. They all have issues. Issues here, issues there. Some want to stay, some want to go. See, see, look, check this out, though. I feel like they're doing all this intimidating with the mouth because they ain't got nothing to back it. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't talk about it. Be about it. Yep. The realities are, if they're, if they're causing staff problems, they're causing other inmates problems, we'll start by writing them up, and they'll receive misconduct reports. And then if they're 
level is to the point where they're elevated, they can go spend their time at Western. I don't like being intimidated. Me either. I don't take you very well. So we're now three quarters of the way through this transition and we're still pursuing inmates to assert their power over others and corrupt the system. <laughs> oh my God, your whole demeanor just changed. Why are you tripping? Oh my God. What happened? What? This is getting old. I'm tired of it. Marissa showered with her girlfriend. What the hell? Yeah. Who said they showered with their girlfriend? Marissa? Yeah. Shut up. She's sitting on the other side? Yeah. She's sitting there with diamonds. Wow. You promised you'd be here. I know. I don't want you getting in trouble. I'm oh my foot. I'm so mad right now. <laughs> Tell her, is it true or is it not? Because if it's true, that's what she did, then it. You know, just be honest with me. But if you lie to my face and then I find out that it did go down, I'm gonna come at you right so. It's not fair what she did to you, you know what I'm saying? Hey, she wants to talk to you. She wants you to come out and talk. How long has it been since you cut your hair? It's been three years since I had a haircut. You're not taking the length out, right? Yeah, I'm taking up two inches. Two inches? <laughs> Hell no! <laughs> what are you stoned? Not today. Huh. When I did time back in the day, they had a beauty shop and we had to suave hairspray and all that. Everything. They got drunk on it, didn't they? Yeah. 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 And so they were drinking the hairspray to, to get drunk and then they, they, they got, got caught on top of the prison in Grants trying to escape because they were all afraid. drunk. I don't understand that though. Wanting to be high in prison, that's yeah. just insane to me. You're like, wow, I'm sweet, I'm, I'm in prison, wow. <laughs> I'm still in prison, you know, like, oh, no way, that's no like way. Since I've been here in Springer, the environment's different, you have more freedom. I am different now. I wanna go home. That's my only objective, get home. Now that I've been in here, I see there was so much better that I could have done. I'm here for 15 more months, and I'm here on drug charges. Same thing here. I'm here on trafficking. It's crazy. By February 2018, it'll be five years and nine months. I'm more than ready to go home, more than ready. Will I do dope when I leave here? No. You don't appreciate what you have until you don't have it anymore. I would, became a great grandma in prison. This is a poem I wrote. It's for my grandson, Zach. I know you don't know me, but I thought we could meet. Tell you a little something about me. Most people call me Mama D. This place is the ugliest, hardest part of my life. And here I feel anger, sadness, heartbreak, and strife. And when I feel it's taking over, my sweet Zachary appears with his sweet angel smile. His sweet baby voice rings in my ears. If ever you need me, you know where I'll be. I need you, I love you. Always forever love me. I've got six grandkids who who know me as Nana D. She's in prison. I don't want the seventh to know me in here. I don't want him to know me by pictures or by the telephone. I can't have that. I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be that person anymore. Says, hey, buns. I'm good, I guess. You know what? Yeah, I love you. I wish I could take you some Cheetos and a Dr. Pepper right now. Remember that? How about coffee and donuts every morning? Even on our bad days, we're good to me. I remember stressing about rent. I think about you every day, and I miss you so much. I never lived life until you came into mine. Thank you. I wouldn't take back. I'd do it again, but this time I'd do it better. 
Happy birthday, dear Kyle. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, baby. Who am I? Don't even matter. It's multiple people. Okay, but it's a lie. So I want to let you know. Yes, it is. Y'all have a chair at the shower? No, that was dying. Hold up, baby. Wait till y'all have a chair in the shower, bitch. Come on. Yeah, not me. 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 Because that's not who that was. And you can go in there and ask who it was. And they'll tell you. How come everybody knows? How come everybody knows? You can go ask her and she'll tell you about you. I can't believe you lied to my I did. I gave you that one chance to tell me the truth. I can't. I'm telling you with this You, you a punk ass bustard. A bustard? A wankster ass bitch. On camera, that's what you want to say. You, you bitch. We're going to go in there. Let's go see, baby. They're going to bang. Katrina and uh, Marissa, come on. Damn! Be careful. Don't follow them, because the cops will come. We don't want the cops to come. Oh, oh boy. This might not be good. Let's see. OK. And that's it. Well, I had that bitch tossed all over the place. Yeah, this how sort of disputes are settled? Yes. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> disputes are settled. This is the first time the inmates are going to be released. To not have them come back is, is the, the biggest goal of them all. We have women. They will come to us with pervasive criminal histories. They are also women who will transition in our community, whether we like it or not. I love you, baby. I love you, too. I'll have you forever because I got my picture. Yes, you will. Bye, Mama. So this prison experience matters for our neighborhoods. What happens behind our prison walls has a direct relationship on the safety and security of our neighborhoods. <laughs> Today is the day we get to be released from Department of Corrections, and we're happy. 
my anxiety is up to here, but it's a good anxiety. Get institutionalized. Yeah, your life you get put used on hold to just you know a, a certain way of living, and it's hard to function in the real world. When you first get out there, you're like, ah, oh, you don't know what to do. I love you. We did a lot of time together. We cried together. We prayed together. We try to find ourselves in a place like this. It's really hard. We have the courage to make the right investments in their transition back into our community to hopefully free them of their past when they do return. Be good. I love you. I'm confident in these women. Be good, okay? I'm confident in them because, one, I'm confident in humanity and our capacity to adapt and improve when we make those decisions. We were advised on the radio that there was a fight on the compound. One of the CEOs actually overheard some inmates talking in the restroom of Housing Unit 5. They understood that there was a fight. I'm here in mass control, we have access to all the cameras in the whole compound. The officers can't be in every place all the time, so master control picks up the slack. There's footage from inside the units, and that's the front door. I got a good idea of around the time that it happened. I'm trying to find when they came into the housing unit so I can start looking at the other camera angles to figure out what happened. Every time I do an investigation on an altercation, you come to the camera, and once you have an idea of the time, there's so many things you can see in the camera that that's going to tell the story there. The camera doesn't lie. Oh, there he is right here. You can see him walking into the pod now. There was a problem outside, and that's why they went inside, so no one would see him. McManaway, she doesn't even belong in Housing Unit 5. They're going to be coming in this way into the restroom area. Um, McManaway is seen going into the housing unit at approximately 1246. They went into the restroom area at 1247. There's no reason that she should have been in housing unit 5 at the time, so there's no excuse for that either, and that's something we don't tolerate. We identified the inmate that was involved in the altercation. Um, he's been verified by the camera system. We have our hard evidence, and we're going to be bringing him down now. McManaway. Physical violence is a threat to our prison system. Let's go, my friend. I'm going to tell you again. Inmates who are physically violent will face punishment. There she comes now. There's Miss. I'm not having no trouble with nobody, no issues. I don't do nothing. I'm leaving in three weeks. What happened? Give it two weeks. Two weeks. Well, I guess that's a plus. Come on down. Where are we going? To the holding cells. To the what? Oh, we'll figure it out. Good. What do you think? Mm. Miss Miss Angelina McManaway, she didn't follow the rules from the moment she got off the bus. If I put that person back on the compound, it can turn more violent because now that person has been caught, so they want retaliation. It's not just a matter of safety for the staff, but the safety of, of the other inmates. When one when, when individual feels the level of that they can walk into another unit and start a fight, she was wrong, she was mistaken. And that's what she's learning right now. You hope that they change, you hope that they ap appreciate the level of privilege, but if they don't, they don't get to stay. Okay, you going home to this? Yes, baby. So we go to they just called us right now? and get on the train. They just called us. Who? Over the intercom. Yeah, that's P1 right here. So it's oh. time to go. It's time to go, guys. Let's roll out.
Bye guys. Oh really? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Roll out, ladies. Let's roll out. As soon as we get on the other side of this, we can taste the freedom. The longer we wait, the harder my heart jumps. I know. I know. Uh -huh. Bye guys. Is that the van? Oh, come on. Is that the van with the plan? Yeah. I love you too. Be good. two weeks away and she could not be going home in two weeks as she says everybody out of the way let's go depends on the administration and what they decide katrina leaving affected a lot of us she's a big personality around us she's a funny gal she's good company you know but i mean life goes on in here Miss McManaway, she had a, a sense of attitude from the moment she got off the bus. You're ready someday in the future. Right? Maybe our paths will cross again. You know what I mean? Yeah. She didn't do what she was supposed to while she was here. And I don't make examples, but she did this, right? She was given the opportunity and she didn't do what she was supposed to. So if you don't do what you're supposed to, you don't get to stay. Fix whatever issues you got, right? Some of it can be fixed by you, some of it's gonna take some time, realistically, so that you qualify to be here. It's that simple, right? Stack him, please. True to my word, aren't I? Someday, maybe you'll be ready, huh? Yeah, maybe. Maybe, huh? Everybody over there has a bag. Okay, take it out. Play some the word in his whack. Katrina. She's <laughs> this place kind of a joke. They shouldn't have brought me here to single me out and then send me back. So we're gonna take the and talk to you. What was that? <laughs> I said tell the warden you can go himself. <laughs> Hello, McMahon, where you're riding away. My chariot away. What's your number? Seven eight one four seven. We are done. We have had a successful transition of our female population into different prisons. We've settled our lower risk female inmates into a lower risk prison campus environment and our higher risk into a higher risk prison. That is a phenomenal success in my measure. know what percentage of you sitting here think you're gonna get away with stuff. But you're gonna make the mistake of seeing all this privilege and viewing it as weakness. If they want us to give this place a chance, they should give us inmates a chance as well. singling out the troublemakers from those that are committed to succeed and make sure that we're uh, housing them more appropriately. Over there, they were trying to make us feel like, oh, it's such a privilege to be here. Like, you have to act right, da 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 Like, that, please. You're here now. And you have to admit, this place is, is different. 
right? With freedom comes responsibility. We must realize that these ladies are returning to our neighborhoods. I got no desire to come back here. I got no desire to go to jail. Just want to be real for a minute. I wonder what that's like. I believe in the ability of a person to change. You have to want to be a better sister, wife, mother. I will go home someday and be that mom and be there. I will never come back. As good leaders, we've given every opportunity to succeed. But what we've worked hard to create here is possibilities, opportunities. You have to want to try and be different. I don't have nowhere to go. I'm probably gonna fall right back in, but I'm gonna try. As this simply breathtaking experiment in New Mexico unfolds, and if it works, then we need to continue that process throughout this entire prison system. The pieces are in place. Our success is going to be your success. Your success, right? Welcome to Springer. Thank you. Thank you.